All right, let's put this chicken dish together. This is a chicken breast with herbe de Provence, pardon my French, and uh, we're going to do a beautiful mushroom pan sauce with this. So let's get our uh, herbe de Provence chicken breast prepped. Very simple. Two cloves of garlic crushed, and here you go. This is herbs from Provence, herbe de Provence, any decent gourmet shop or supermarket even in the herb section. You're going to see this. It is a mixture of about eight different dried herbs. Uh, the dominant herbs would be rosemary, chervil, marjoram. There's actually a little lavender in there. Uh, beautiful aromatic. See how nice and green that is? That's a good quality one. It's fresh. Uh, there's an old saying with herbs. If it's brown, set it down. Okay, don't use uh, old brown dried up herbs. They're, the flavor's gone. So that was a beautiful batch right there. And uh, I'm going to put uh, seven or eight grinds of black pepper on there. No salt. We'll salt this before we uh, sear it. And just a tablespoon or so of oil, just so I can make a little bit of a rub here with the garlic and the, uh, the herb de Provence. Now, minimum two hours in the fridge. All right, longer is better. If you can leave this overnight, that would be great. All right, let's put this dish together. Uh, the main ingredient in our sauce here is going to be these uh, sautéed mushrooms. So I took about 15 white button mushrooms. I'm going to slice those up. Now, again, you want to quarter them, you want to have them. So it's fine with me. The key is they're the same size. All right. If you have really thin slices and then some thick slices, then they don't cook evenly. That's when you know the, the not so great cooks uh, sauce looks a little weird. Uh, you're going to take your time and make those all even. Now I really like uh, the old half butter, half olive oil mixture for a dish like this, and I'm putting about twice as much as I normally would to sear these chicken breasts. So that was about three tablespoons of oil and three tablespoons of butter. Okay. Now that's a, that is a lot of fat, but I am going to cook my mushrooms in that also, and I am going to use the extra fat to make a roux. So uh, don't worry. I know it looks like a lot, but that's fine. All right. I gave it about five minutes per side. That was just a, enough time to give it a nice brown caramelization. Certainly not going to cook it all the way through in five minutes on each side, but it's going to be about halfway, I'd guess. So take those out. That's five minutes each side. And I'm going to finish simmering those in the sauce at the end. And uh, so we're just going to set those off and grab our mushrooms. So it's about, I don't know, two, three cups of mushrooms. And see, this is where all that extra fat came in. That, those mushrooms really suck up that extra oil and butter. I'm going to add about a half a teaspoon of salt here. And that salt is going to bring out the water in the mushroom. I turn my pan to medium. All right, in fact, I just turned it up to medium high because those mushrooms can take a lot of heat. And there's nothing in that pan that's going to burn. Okay, there's no real garlic left. There's nothing that's going to get us in trouble. So I want a nice brown caramelization on the mushroom. All right, you don't have to make them too dark. Let me hold one up here. But I do want, uh, see that? I do want a nice little brownness on the mushroom. Okay? Now when you think those mushrooms have cooked enough, you be the judge. I want you to sprinkle in, turn your heat down to medium. I want you to sprinkle in about a tablespoon of flour. Now traditionally roux is just flour in the butter and or oil mixed. Here we're using the actual mushroom to make the roux. Now, very important, the key to this dish is that you cook out the flour, meaning you got to cook the starch in the flour, otherwise it will taste floury and starchy. How you know it's done, a great tip a chef once gave me, when the uh, pan smells like cooked pie crust, you know that flour has cooked. Okay, That took at least six minutes. All right, So I sauteed that on medium for about six minutes, and I was pretty sure that that flour was cooked. And it had almost like a, a mushroom quiche smell to it. It was really, uh, you could smell the cooked flour. If it smells raw, uh, it, give it a little longer, okay? All right, so to that cooked roux, we are going to add two cups of really high-quality organic chicken broth. All right, I'm going to turn that up to high. And here's my secret ingredient. Shh, don't tell anybody. About a half a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. Now, see that beautiful color? It turns it from that pale, uh, almost yellow, to a nice, rich brown. Also, that little bit of acid, that little bit of sweetness in the vinegar, uh, really balances out the flavor. Once that came to a simmer, I'm going to turn it down to low. All right, I want to boil these chicken breasts. I want them just to simmer lightly. I'm going to give them about another five minutes on each side, and that should just about cook the chicken. And also, because I'm not covering this, the uh, sauce is going to reduce, and that flour is going to slowly thicken the sauce. And uh, it's really good. just going to have a beautiful texture and consistency. All right, so I took out the chicken breasts. Those were just about done. Actually, they were done. And I just want to adjust my sauce, a little salt, a little pepper maybe. See, that's a nice thickness. 
And if it's a little loose, turn up the heat and just reduce it a little more. But because of that tablespoon of flour, I got a beautiful uh, mushroom sauce to put these chicken back in. Drip in the juices from the pan, and that is ready to serve. So this is one of those dishes that looks fancy, it tastes fancy, it, it's not fancy. All right, no one will know about the balsamic vinegar. That's our secret. And I served it with some fried planta, a little julienne of red pepper. Those are also in other demos on the site. And uh, I top it a little fresh herb. I like the combination of the dry herb I marinated it with. Uh, same type of herbs on top. I had a little marjoram, a little, uh, a little fresh basil. Hey, come on. You want that, don't you? See how good that looks? All right, you can make that very simple, very easy, all in one pan. And uh, I really hope you enjoy that.